Chief. It was my nickname for him, Chief. So, uh, somehow it's hard to imagine this time. I don't think I don't think Tucson will ever be the same without Brother Green. No, sir. But keep pressing the battle. Yes, sir. We're nearing the shore. Yes, that Brother Green gave me, and uh, one of them popped loose, so you seen me up there fiddling with it, that's what I was doing, so apologize for that. Um, let's, uh, I, I'd like for Brother Ewald Frank, if, uh, if he's at uh, sir, if you're able to come forward and, and speak, is he, oh yes, okay. Brother Ewald and Brother Green were friends for many, many years. So, like those of us here, God bless you. God bless you, sir. I greet you all in the precious name of Jesus Christ the world. I thank you, Jackie. I'm the one witness who knew Brother Brandon for 10 years and uh, it was just on August the 15th, 60 years ago, when I shook Brother Branham's hand for the first time. In 1949, I heard the name William Branham for the first time. In 1951, for the second time. In 1955, I attended all the meetings in Germany. 
I saw Bible days. I saw the same ministry red preaching that our Lord had as Son of Man. I was so overwhelmed and of course I had one desire to shake the hand of this man yeah. of God. You can never imagine not speaking a word of our language and telling every person in the prayer line who they are, where they came from, telling your sister you come from Hamburg, you're a nurse, you work in a hospital, telling a brother you come from Berlin, and then something very special happened. There was a couple from Zurich, Switzerland. Their daughter was born blind, 11 years old. And when Brother Brandon, and I tell you the truth, I was sitting very, very near to the front, and I was so nervous that Brother Brandon would pray for a child born blind. I said, Lord God, please, please. But in one moment, a very short prayer, and they receive your sight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The girl ran across the platform and brought a brand new quarterback and said, Would you please put your finger at my nose? She returned and put her finger on his nose. We all wept. We all praised the Lord and beloved brothers and sisters. For a whole week, I saw Bible days. I saw Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. And it was in 1958 at the Dallas, Texas Convention, arranged by Gordon Lindsay, where all the great men, all the great evangelists were speaking in the morning and afternoon services, and Brother Brennan was the main speaker in the evening services. I watched one day, I watched the second day, third day, and I saw the difference, the difference between all the other ministers, greatest evangelists. And I came and went to Brother Brennan, spoke to him and said, please tell me, what is the purpose of your ministry? And I, I just remember that day, June the 12th, 1958, Dallas, Texas. And then after our conversation, when Brother Brandon said, Brother Frank, you will return to Germany with this message. I had no idea about the message. I just saw this extraordinary ministry. And then Brother Brennan said at the beginning of his sermons, just now a man laid his arms around me from Germany. Just now where we had on the average of 10,000 converts every night, 50,000 in five nights. So beloved, I'm an eyewitness, I'm an earwitness of what God has done in our time. Amen. And especially in closing, let me say this, the ministry the Lord God gave me is directly connected to Brother Brandon's ministry. It's God himself who arranges things. And I'm hoping to be permitted to say this to the glory of God, that you would understand my responsibility. But on April the 2nd, 1962, just before sunrise, I heard the voice of the Lord as you hear my voice now, my servant, your time for this city will soon be over. I will send you to other cities 
to preach my word Amen. with one blow. I was on the carpet on December 3rd, 1962. Brother Brandon repeated in the English language, word for word, what the Lord has spoken to my in the German language. And he said, Brother Frank, you misunderstood. You thought it would be a natural famine. And you have put natural groceries in store. But God would send the famine to hear his words. And the food you have to put in store is the word of God promised for this day. And it's kept in the messages which are being typed. So by the grace of God, I also knew Brother Green, to be honest. Brother Green would not know where Germany is or Europe. But on the day of the burial, on the day of the burial, I met Brother Green for the first time. And he was the only one I invited to join me in sharing the message to the nations. And I asked him to come and just testify of what his eyes have seen and his ears have heard. Yes. So right in 1966, after the burial, yes. when I invited Brother Green, I returned. And in the two years, 66, 67, in 25 different cities in all of Western European countries, Brother Green joined me in sharing his testimony. I was preaching the word and he shared the testimony of the things he saw in her. Just say, let me say this here. When Brother Green wrote to me, I read the last few lines. I desire to be with you in Romania but I don't know at this time. I cannot say if there will be time. I'd like to come, but I have to see somebody to pastor to some tabernacle. I will continue to stay faithful and busy as long as the Lord gives me strength and direction. Your visit brought joy to my heart and would desire, I would desire to assist you wherever it might be. Please pray for me. There are many directions for myself to take at these times. The harvest is plenty, but the labors are few. Brother Frank, please continue to be faithful to your commission that I personally believe to be true. So by the grace of Almighty God, I did what the Lord called me to do and the prophet confirmed. And I look back and I preached in the last 50 years in over 150 countries in over 600 cities traveling day and night sharing the true message the true word of god promised for this day and we are the children of promise according to galatians chapter 4 verse 28 ye are as isaac was are the children of promise God's true children believe every promise. Yes. They believe Malachi chapter 4. Yes. And we understand God has kept his word, fulfilled his promise, and sent his prophet. I even had Brother Brandon to ask me to preach in Jeffersonville on December the 2nd, 1962. He asked me to preach in Los Angeles for the businessmen's convention, giving me the details of the mission here. So, I'm very grateful to Almighty God to have known the Lord, to have known his prophet, 
to know the message of the hour yeah. by the grace of God. God bless you all and with you all in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Amen.